This is Kei Mochizuki, a Japanese illustrator with over 700,000 followers, most well known for her simplistic style with incredible line art. So in this video, I will be copying and breaking down one of her illustrations with a focus on line art, so that I can hopefully understand what makes her illustrations so good. Hello everyone, my name is Saria, and I'm a self-taught artist pushing to improve my art every day. Since my art is heavily inspired by anime, video games, and most of all other artists, I have decided to make a channel breaking down my learning process so that you can benefit from it too. As this channel is obviously inspired by TPPO, I just wanted to give them a big thank you, as is the reason I'm doing this. Much love. For K Mochizuki's study, I decided to start by copying her illustration of Mash Kyriolite. Focusing on line art while also trying to understand other decisions she makes in the rest of the process. I broke down the study into these faces as to make it easier for you to follow along. In the beginning, since I have a very clear reference, the sketching phase is pretty straightforward. I start with a very rough construction and then work in some details. It's extremely important in this phase and throughout the study to actually observe what you're drawing. You should never be guessing what something looks like. A good observation to drawing ratio is about 50-50 at least. For the line art, you can notice that K uses a brush called G-Pen K, which seems to be a lot like the default G-Pen brush in Clip Studio Paint, so that's why I use for this step. The key aspect that makes K's line art so great is the line weight. You can see that the lines around the silhouette are a lot thicker than the ones inside the silhouette, with the face and neck being an exception as to draw the viewer's attention in due to contrast. Lines are also a lot thicker whenever they intersect. You can see this in the clothes or around the shoulders. Another thing to notice is the way her lines feel so crisp. After some thinking, I realized that that's because Kay rarely uses strong curves in the line art and instead has many sharp shapes all over the illustration, especially in the clothes area. After the line art is finished, I painted in the base colors by selecting the negative space and inverting the selection, followed by using the fill tool to fill in the specific colors. For this stage, I like to keep every color on a separate layer, to make things easier for the rendering part. For the rendering stage, I started by airbrushing in a highlight area and a shadow area to the hair on one layer and then painted in the hard shadows on a different layer using the G-Pen. As for the hard highlights on the hair, I enabled the border effect in the layer properties tab to get this line around whatever I draw on that layer. You can choose the color of the edge on the layer properties tab as well. These highlights go mainly on the banks. The rest of the rendering stage is quite simple to replicate. For the face, there is a simple circular highlight on the nose, and a dark shadow on the forehead following the hair strands, which is then outlined by a saturated color, which I think is supposed to be subsurface scattering. It's important to note here that Kay's usage of shadows is very minimal and simple, which further gives the illustration this crisp look. The same applies for the rest of the skin on the neck and shoulders. The shadow shapes are kept medium-sized, simple, and outlined by a saturated color. As for the eye, the rendering here is also kept very minimalistic. A highlight on the iris, and on the bottom of the eye, and a small dot on the top of it. The shadow shapes on the clothes have more variety in size, but are mostly very sharp to compensate for the lack of line art, and to outline the folds, as well as to keep the crisp look of the illustration. I won't go too in deep into the color choices because I feel like I'm not qualified enough to understand them and explain them to you. The final touches were for the glasses. I added a reflection effect using a screen blend mode under the line art layer with the default soft airbrush. And finally, I added this blurry effect manually by painting red along the right side of the affected shapes and with green on the left. I'm sure there are more efficient ways to do this, but I thought this was alright, so I kept it this way. And this was the final result. Looking at it now, there are certainly some minor differences, like how the eyes are lower and the classes are higher on the face than the original. 
One other difference is in the line art. There are many places where my lines are thinner or thicker than the reference. The line art is also just not as clean as the reference in general. My messy lines are noticeable all over the illustration. I was definitely close to the look of the original, but I wasn't quite there. Overall though, I think I did quite a good job at copying this illustration. I was definitely a good way of learning how a professional and extremely popular artist like Kei Mochizuki goes about line art. Here are the stages of completion one more time with the most important notes. Thank you for sticking around until here. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that helped you get a better understanding of what makes Kei's art so clean and crisp like it did for me. Since this is my first YouTube video, I'd be really happy to hear your thoughts on it. I'm new to all of this and I really want to improve, since I wasn't too satisfied with this one, so please share with me any suggestions you would have for in future videos. Also, if you have any wishes for future artists you want me to break down, feel free to share them in the comments. Anyways, I really appreciate it. Happy painting!